Hello class, we're here to go over the extra practice problems from module four. Module four, we discuss some common discrete distributions, some common continuous distributions, and we worked with them in R. We also just started Monte Carlo simulation. Number one, suppose it is known that one seventh of adults who take a certain medication will experience side effects. Let the random variable y denote the number experiencing side effects out of a random sample of five patients taking the medication. Well, y follows a binomial distribution. Letter A, find n and p. Okay, we see n is five and p, the probability, one over seven. In fact, maybe I will do that here. It is five, P is one over seven. Okay, next question. Calculate the probability that Y is less than or equal to two. Well, there's really two ways we could do this. First, you notice this is exactly capital F of two, where F is our cumulative distribution function. In R, the prefix for the cumulative distribution function is P. And so this is what we enter, p binome 2, size is 5, p is 1 over 7, and we have this probability. Now, that is not the only way to do it. So we know binomial distribution is discrete. The other way we can do here, we can just add f of 0, f of 1, and f of 2, where f is the probability mass function. So here, the support of this random variable um, starts at zero and marches forward until we hit five. So the integer is zero through five. So we would add f of zero plus f of one plus f of two. And in R, the prefix for the probability mass function is D. So I can define this set to be zero, one, and two. And then we just add this D binome, which is our probability mass function. You notice both times I get the same number, as I should, but we can really calculate either way here. Now, the mean and variance, well, we don't need to use R for this. I will just show them here. So the mean is n times p, so you just multiply 5 times 1 over 7. The variance is np times 1 minus p. Mean and variance, we discussed the formulas for the binomial distribution in the lesson video, and I've just used them here. Okay, so this is the end of number one. What's the next one? X follows a chi-square distribution. X is a continuous random variable, and we're given k equals five degrees of freedom. Now, we want the probability that x lies between two and five. We have two possibilities here. We can start by using the cumulative distribution function. We take capital F of five minus capital F of two. The reason we can do this, we are continuous. And so it doesn't really matter if we use less than or equal to or just less than. Um, continuous random variables, the probability that capital X equals any given value is zero. And so it makes calculations just slightly simpler with the cumulative distribution function. Okay, now that's not the only way we can do part A. The other way is we can integrate the probability density function. Probability density function has a D as a prefix, so I integrate d chi-square and five degrees of freedom. The lower limit is two, upper limit is five. And you see both times I get the same value. Of course I should, that's the actual value of the probability. I've just calculated it two different ways. You can choose which way you prefer. Okay, well, the mean and the variance, these are formulas we discussed in the lecture video, the mean of chi-square. 
where you have k degrees of freedom is k. The variance of chi-square when you have k degrees of freedom is 2k. So we can just run this. We have 5 and 10. I didn't need r for that, but it's fine. I am putting my answers as we go along. Letter C. Okay, great. Here we get to use a Monte Carlo simulation. We're going to take 100,000 um, sample 100,000 times from this distribution, and we will estimate this probability that we already calculated exactly in A. Okay, does our answer agree with letter A? We will find out. So, in order to sample from a distribution, we use the prefix R, little r. So we have R chi-square, we want 100,000 and five degrees of freedom. And then this gives us this relative frequency of the values that lie between two and five. And you see we get 0.4328. Now, the actual value was 0.4328. 2648. So if we wanted to answer the question, it does not match exactly, but it is close. Okay, let's see. That's the end of question number two. So we can clear our save variables and begin with number three. Once again, we have a chi-square distribution. Here we have six degrees of freedom. And then y is a linear transformation of this random variable. Well, I'll go ahead and do this in R. So what do we know for a chi-square? Just as I mentioned in the last problem, the mean is the number of degrees of freedom. The variance is two times that. So I will just save that. The mean is six. Variance is two times six. Now. What do we know about the mean of a linear transformation? Well, I put it here. It would be 3 times the mean of x minus 5, which is 13. It's 18 minus 5. And we could have done this by hand, of course. But the variance, we take 3 squared times the variance of x. And here we get 108. So the next question, letter C. Ah, uh, letter B, does Y follow a chi-square distribution? Well, there's a lot of ways we can answer this. Um, we discussed, just as a comment, if you have a normal distribution and you take a linear transformation, it remains normal. But that's generally not the case for all distributions. So here, just thinking about mean and variance, we can answer this. So look, I have a mean 13 and a variance 108. If this was chi-square, well, we'd have to have 13 degrees of freedom, but then the variance would be 26, which is not 108. So the answer right here, no. Chi-square random variables have to have mean k and variance 2k when you have k degrees of freedom. I like that question. Number four, we are told the expression values of a certain gene are normally distributed with a mean of 1.6 and a standard deviation of 0 0.4. The question is, what's the probability a randomly selected patient has value, ex gene expression value between one and 1 1.6? All right. We can use the cumulative distribution function here. We can take capital F of 1.6 minus capital F of 1. Okay, here we have it. It is 0.4331928. Letter B, we want to use a Monte Carlo simulation to estimate exactly this. Sample size, 500,000. Compute the probability. Oh, okay, from part A. Very nice. Well, once again, we use the prefix R. So you notice I have sampled 500,000 
from the normal distribution with mean 1.6, standard deviation 0.4. Then here is my relative frequency that should be close. We have a very large N, should be close to the true probability. This is my estimate here. You notice I get 0.432656, okay? This is my Monte Carlo estimate. Now, last one, what is the probability exactly two of the five patients have the gene expression values between one and 1 1.6? Here we need to use a binomial distribution. The N is five and the P, well, we calculated from part A. So, probability p is here okay that was what we calculated from part a and then all we want is the probability that say i call this capital x capital x equals two and this is a discrete random variable and so we will have some well some positive probability here the D prefix gives you the probability mass function and you see it's approximately three point Four one seven one eight five. It says to round to at least four places, and certainly I have enough there on my my R. All right. At this point, we have finished everything. I have all of my commands in an R file, which I will post for you, and then I'll also post the answers. Um, together with the code, just as I have on the previous worksheets. Thank you so much, students.